All right, well, hopefully you found that interesting and it helped to illustrate what I was suggesting about the strange situation. Um, let's go ahead and, and as you notice, I decided not to put any other videos in between that and returning back here. So <laughs> made my decision while you were gone. Um, so let's go through what Mary Ainsworth found in her research on babies who were 12 to 24 months old who ha went through the strange situation in her initial research. It was always with their mothers. Um, subsequent researchers have looked at other caregivers, fathers, grandparents, um, professional caregivers, stuff like that, um, and seen similar patterns. So I'll just say mom for shorthand because that's how it was originally done. So um, we've got caregiver where it says present. That's that first play period where the baby could explore if they wanted and things like that while the caregiver's there. Absent is where the caregiver has left the room and the baby's left alone or with a stranger. And then the column that says returns refers to once mom has come back into the room and we wanna see how the baby reacts to being reunited. So what Ainsworth found is that about 50% of the babies that she tested fell into the secure attachment type. Um, what that means is that while mom was present, the baby explored the environment, um, but touched base frequently with mom. So the baby goes and checks out some toys and then maybe brings one back and shows it to their mom. Or um, the baby is um, you know, walking around the room and then looking over their shoulder periodically to make sure that mom's still there, mom's you know, noticing them, things like that. So it, they, they are confident to explore as long as they're aware and sure that mom's there as a safe base. When mom leaves, um, the baby protests. And I use that word on purpose because I don't want to overstate how upset they were when mom left, but I don't want to understate it either. They noticed that mom left. They didn't want mom to leave. Um, some of them cry, not all of them cry. Um, almost all of them cr crawl or toddle over to the room where she's leaving and try to catch up. They're like, wait, 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 you forgot the baby. Um, so it looks like they're trying to catch her um, once they realize that the door has shut and they've been left behind in this room, most of them will start crying. And uh, it's not a big sobbing cry. It's more of a, Wah! like you've left the baby. And you may see um, tears that are like balanced on their lower lids. They haven't spilled down their cheeks. They're just sort of balanced on their lower lids. They clearly are upset. They didn't want to be left alone here. Um, and to a certain extent, it's almost like they're surprised that they got left behind. Like this is unusual for mom to have left them like this. And so that's why they're sort of stunned for a second sometimes. Like I said, some of them might not be crying at first because they're like, wait, did this just really happen? Am I alone here? Where did mom left? And then they start crying. Oh my gosh, I'm alone. And they start crying. The good news is the second mom returns and says, hi, baby, and holds her hands out. The baby, you know, wants to be picked up. The baby calms down really quickly because what was wrong with them has now been solved. Mom has come back. And so um, they very quickly are, are able to get back into playing with the toys again because as long as mom is there, they feel comfortable and they feel secure. Um, so that's characteristic of a secure attachment. I think sometimes people have an incorrect impression of what secure would look like because they think, well, why would the baby be crying? They should be securely attached enough to their mom that they know she's coming back. But they kind of don't know she's coming back in part because she hasn't really left them alone that much. Like she's usually there to provide a safe base for them. And so this is kind of surprising for them. Um, I have a grandson that I've mentioned already who's in, he's firmly in this correct time to be tested on this. And um, we haven't tested him specifically, but I can tell you that um, he does not like mommy to go to the bathroom or uh, she and I went out without him the other day and left him behind with grandpa. And he was like, what is this? And he kept saying it. My, my husband told me that he kept looking out the window going, mama, mama. And my husband would be like, it's okay. You know, papa's here. You're fine. And he's like, mama. And he'd sit down and he'd let my husband read to him a little bit again. And then He'd look out the window again, Mama, <laughs> you come back. And, you know, we were gone maybe an hour. Um, but he he wasn't crying because he did have a secure enough attachment, I think, with, with his grandpa that he was okay with it. But he definitely wanted Mama to come back, <laughs> for sure. And that's really normal in a securely attached 12 to 24-month-old. They want their moms to come back. They feel safest and most confident when mom's there. 
Now, the other 50% of babies tested fell into the insecure attachment type, and there are two different types of insecure attachments. About 25% of babies fell into the avoidant type in Ainsworth's research, and what you find is that the avoidant baby is very confident in their exploration of the room. They never check back with mom. They just do their own thing. They are completely confident. When mom leaves, um, in the early experiments, the mom was told, you know, actually don't leave the room until your baby has looked at you to let you know that, that they know you're leaving. But with the avoidant attached babies, it was kind of hard to get them to actually look up and even acknowledge that mom was saying goodbye. Almost to the point where you start to think, are they actually hearing her? Like maybe they've got hearing problems, not a, an attachment problem, but these are babies who, you know, were known to have normal hearing and there was nothing else wrong except for that they just really didn't care that their mom was leaving them alone in a room. And when mom came back and, and said, hey baby, and held her arms out to them, the baby didn't come to the moms. They continued what they were doing, barely looked up. They really were not that attached to their moms. They really, um, we're just not looking to their moms as a safe place to to explore from. Now that might, to us Americans who want like independence and stuff like that, that might, might almost sound like a good thing that I'm describing, that here we have a baby who's so confident that they you know don't even need their moms to support them through novel situations and things. But uh, what they have found in subsequent research on avoidant babies is that, it, that this is oftentimes what happens in a baby who has had inconsistent care during their first year of life. Um, and so they have realized that they are the only person that they can trust. And so it's not a good sign to have an infant who is not looking to their mom for support and, and like that. Um, so the other type of insecure attachment is almost the opposite kind of insecurity. This is what we call an ambivalent or resistant attachment. And you'll see why there's two names for it in a second. What we see in the, in the baby with a ambivalent attachment is that they tend to be really clingy to their moms. So even though their mom is present and you know, there to say, serve as a safe spot, the baby is too nervous to leave their mom's side and go explore the toys. Um, or to engage with the with the room. Um, now, there's a, a little um, confound here, which is that a lot of times babies with ambivalent attachments have moms who cannot just relax and let their baby explore the room without interfering. I told you before that the moms are told, you know, read these magazines or fill out these forms and let your baby do whatever your baby wants to do. You know, you're told specifically, if your baby initiates contact with you, yeah, react like you normally do, but don't you start it. Like, let the baby run around and do their own thing. And the ambivalently atta attached babies oftentimes have moms who just cannot let their baby explore on their own. They get down on the floor. They show them specific toys. They, they interfere with what could be their baby's exploratory behavior. Um, so the baby might be clingy because of something about the baby or the baby might be clingy because of something about the mom. It's hard to tell at this you know, point. When the mom leaves, the baby doesn't just protest like a securely attached baby does. Instead, it throws a fit like it has a temper tantrum. It's mad that its mom has left. And so the baby might pound on the door with their little baby fists or, um, you know, pat on it with their open hands, but it's a slap. You know, they're like, slap, slap, slap their hands on the door. Um, they might scream at their moms, Wah! just scream at them. And uh, their faces get really red, but no tears are really present. So they're, it looks more like they're angry than that they're scared or sad. Um, so they're really angry about, and they might throw whatever toy was in their hand, like as a sign of frustration, um, things like that. When mom comes back into the room, the baby might go to her, you know, she comes in, she says, hi, baby, and holds her hands out. And so the baby might go to her, but then when she picks the, the baby up, the baby might slap her in the face or pull her hair or squeeze her cheek, um, or arch their back, let me down. Um, you know, these kinds of things where, and that's where this sort of ambivalence comes in right where the baby wants to be comforted but the mom just is not giving them what the baby needs you know the baby needs something else the baby wants to be comforted but this isn't you're not the person or you're not this is what you do is not making me feel better uh, we this is often called resistant attachment because the baby um, 
resists the mom's efforts to be a safe base or to be supportive. And it might be because the mom gives this kind of contradictory information like, oh, go check out the toys. Here, let me show them to you. You don't know how to turn it on, so let me show you how to turn it on. You know, these kinds of things that give this kind of message of in incompetence to the baby, which I mean, one to one to two year old babies are kind of incompetent, but I mean, they can handle a, an age appropriate toy. Um, mom doesn't need to show them how it works. Let them figure it out, right? So um, you can end up with this ambivalent attachment through um, maybe it's stuff that's innate in the baby or maybe it's something about the way the baby and the mom interact with each other. It's really kind of hard to know how they end up in that situation. So let's talk a little bit about how what we do know about how attachments form. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, honestly, anybody who confidently tells you if you do these things, you'll end up with a securely attached child is wrong. I mean, we don't know for sure exactly for every child and their temperament and things like that, how exactly to end up with a securely attached child. But what we can tell you is that there are certain behaviors that securely attached parents do more often than either of the insecurely attached parents do. And there are some things that the insecurely attached parents do that are different. So let's go through the list of things. Uh, the list on the securely attached is actually pretty brief. It is that those parents of securely attached children tend to be responsive to their child's needs. They don't, the parent doesn't go in with a, a mindset of this is what I'm going to do no matter what signs my baby is giving it, and the baby has to adapt. Instead, the adult goes in saying, I'm gonna feed my child when it's hungry. I'm gonna hold my baby when it wants to be cuddled. I am going to uh, attend to them at night when they cry. I'm going to make sure that they're safe. I'm going to make sure that they're you know, not soiled and I'm going to make sure that everything's okay. And they're going to learn that if they cry, I come. Um, at least for that first six months of life, that's the, that's the pattern that securely attached parents seem to follow. Um, some securely attached parents say that they did it more till like nine months and some even say as much as 12 months, but all of them say in the first six months of life, they fed their babies what's called on demand. So when the babies were hungry, they fed them. They cuddled their babies when their babies wanted to be cuddled. And when they, you know, arched their backs and wanted to be put down, they put them down. They like responded to what the baby was putting out. And that's the one thing that is super consistent across all of them is that um, for at least the first six months, that's how the caregiver acted. Now, there's a lot more variability in what the baby does um, with securely attached kids. Um, but the baby comes into the world. We've already talked a little bit about temperament with certain things, you know, certain levels of activity, um, reactivity, um, you know, sensitivities, things like that. And so when the baby behaves in a way that's consistent with what the caregiver expects or behaves in ways that the caregiver is equipped to handle, it's much more likely that, that there will be a secure attachment between that baby and that parent. When there's a mismatch, it's more likely that you can end up with an insecure attachment. So it's not always, oh, parent, do certain things and you will have a securely attached relationship with your baby. Um, some of it is pure luck. I mean, if you have a baby that is um, experiencing some kind of medical problem and so they take extra care and the parent is you know, anxious and upset because their baby is in a fragile state and things like that, that has been associated with an anxious, ambivalent kind of attachment. Um, Babies who are hard to care for because, for example, they have colic are more likely to have an anxious ambivalent attachment to their caregiver or an avoidant one. Because sometimes just to maintain their sanity, the caregiver has to sometimes not respond to the crying. And so you may end up with a baby who has internalized that they can't trust their environment, but the environment is behaving like that not because the environment wanted to be but because the baby is crying for three hours a day every single day and the environment ultimately doesn't know what to do about it and so you know some learned helplessness on the part of the parent may lead to an avoidant attachment with the, with the baby um, so there are factors that come from the baby I mean so securely attached babies typically have an easy temperament as rated by their parents so that means the parents perceive their babies to be easy to care for um, babies who fall into the 
um, insecure attachment types, their parents are more likely to say that their child has some degree of, of difficulty um, in their temperament, which means there's some degree of mismatch between either parents' expectations or parents' um, skill levels to be able to deal with the needs of their baby. So it's not a lo straight line path um, from parental behavior to child attachment. Let's go ahead and take a break here because I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the long-term effects of attachment and whether we need to even worry about this as parents. So I will see you guys in the next, I almost said episode, huh, that's funny, next video.